Good afternoon, good evening, all the distinguished speakers, colleagues, friends, and guests of the AIB. It is our great pleasure to welcome all of you to the first public session of the AIB 2021 annual meeting hosted by United Arab Emirates. My name is Gregory Liu, the manager of AIB's investment operations department. In today's session, we are going to discuss a project that AIB structured and syndicated in the GCC region. It's called Oman Broadband Infrastructure Project. Oman Broadband is an important milestone for AIB. As a project-focused bank, this project was the first one in which AIB broadened the horizon of connectivity from physical infrastructure to digital ones. It was also the first standalone project or lead arranging project, as we usually say in private sector, under the modality of non-sovereign backed financing involving direct private capital mobilization from Indian and Chinese financial, commercial financier. As the original AIB project team leader, I have the honor to moderate this session with the speakers from the top leadership of Oban Broadband, senior executives of the company's clients, our financiers, and the commercial advisor of the Low Syndicate. Oman Broadband was a startup company with a mission to roll out a nationwide fiber broadband network when it met another startup company called AIIB in 2017. From that point in time, AIIB has worked very closely with Oman Broadband to refine its business case and raised a syndicated loan package of 239 million US dollar in 2018. We are pleased to report that the first phase of network rollout conducted by Oman Broadband has successfully completed this year. At this juncture, we are considering financing the second phase to cover a wider area, bigger population in the country. We hope that this mini case study session on a live AIB project could help all of you gain a bit insight on our thought process on what makes a successful infrastructure project. As a result, we could also expect to assist more member countries and the clients to meet the development needs of infrastructure investment from project preparation to implementation and beyond. Now, without further ado, I would like to invite engineer Saeed Armantari to give us the keynote speech. Saeed currently acts as the CEO of Oman ICT Group. He's also the original and now acting CEO of Oman Broadband. He's a seasoned veteran in Oman's ICT sector with over 19 years of experience. He would share with us the Oman Broadband journey. After that, we would go into Q&A session with other members of the panel, followed by the audience. Saeed, the floor is yours now. Thank you, uh, Gregory. Thank you for this opportunity to share with you uh, the uh, journey of Oman Broadband. Uh, Oman Broadband uh, company was established in 2015. Uh, as one uh, major milestone of the cabinet uh, approved the national broadband strategy uh, of Oman. This strategy laid out Oman Broadband's mandate uh, uh, as a new commercial entity to manage and operate national broadband infrastructure. The entity will be responsible of the process of implementation and expansion of broadband network in the Sultanate as an open access uh, for, the operate, for the telecom operation. According to the uh, government's vision, operators need needs and technology updates in the uh, 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 in telecom industry. This entity will be a key member of one of any shared infrastructure project, so that they can uh, be um, offering these as an open access to all the operators. Before the creation of Oman Broadband, and thanks to Ministry of Transport and Communication and Information Technology uh, vision. Higher Water, was, uh, which was uh, a water treatment company uh, deploying uh, uh, sewage uh, across uh, Muscat, was mandated as well to, 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 to deploy a telecom ducts alongside these pipes, as well as fiber optics within the ducts 
this is to prepare for the national FTTH rollouts. Upon the creation of Imam Broadband, Higher Water have transferred these assets, as well as uh, all um, telecom assets units, including the staffs, which represent the initial foundation of Oman Broadband, uh, both in terms of network asset and human capital. In addition, the Ministry of Finance at that time issued a circulation arguing all ministries, governments, units, and authorities and state-owned companies having telecom infrastructure, whether channels, fiber optics, or other, in uh, according, uh, to coordinate with uh, Oman Broadband. The purpose of managing and leasing uh, such assets as a one interface for this shared infrastructure. As a result of which, a national backbone network is being created throughout the partnership with entities by uh, gaining access to existing infrastructure which was uh, underutilized uh, before the existing of Oman broadband. Thanks to of the national growth of its uh, continuous achievements, Oman Broadband benefits from the support of the Telecom Regulatory Authority as well, which set grounds for Oman Broadband to be an open access for the other telecom operators. Ministry of Transport, Communication and Information Technology, as well as the Ministry of Finance, uh, now are very confident on the investments which they have put on uh, Oman Broadband because of the vision and the strategy and the rollout which they have uh, actually uh, get supported by all the other stakeholders. Against this back, uh, back, uh, backbone network, uh, one year after its launch, Oman Broadband has already become the essential uh, stakeholders in Oman's uh, route to digital society, providing wholesale access to its extensive fiber network to the three broadband service providers, Oman Tel Uridu and Awasir, and now the uh, third mobile operator, Vodafone, which uh, has been introduced recently to the Sultanate of Oman as the new player in the mobile sector. It's now worth noting that under strong leadership, Oman Broadband has raised a lean and world-class team on telecom experts already reaching 98% of Omanization with a diversity of males and females and the majority of this team was selected to be from the youth to support the national agenda of uh, the uh, high, uh, high deployment of the capabilities of the Omanis in the telecom sector. In terms of ownership of Oman Broadband, it was fully owned by the Ministry of Finance from the inception till January 2018. When Oman Broadband was transferred to uh, Oman Investment Fund, in 2020, following the creation of the which, uh, which extends OPC mandate in the large sector of the ICT, this uh, company, Oman Broadband, was transferred to the ICT to be the backbone uh, information technology uh, the, of the ICT strategy of the ICT group. Oman Broadband was considered the backbone of the ICT group since it has uh, the infrastructure, the basic infrastructure, which all the emerging technologies should be built on top of it. With the financial or the successful financial closing in 2018, or in around 2016, Minister of Finance has engaged AIIB to prepare for the financing package. Initially, the idea was to use a project financing, but based on the professional of AIIB projects team, and collaborative discussion with us, Oman Broadband has chosen a secured corporate loan with project finance feature, together with the appropriate government support and B lenders to finance the initial growth phase of Oman Broadband. This has proven to be successful in phase one, and now we are talking the same, or we take we taken the same approach again to uh, uh, extend the financing for phase two of Oman Broadband rollout um, uh, as a phase two uh, in uh, our strategic projects. With the successful financing closing in 2018, Oman Broadband has been 
implementing the network rollout plan as it was set from the beginning, satisfying uh, our KPIs with the Telecom Regulatory Authority, with 2020 and 2021 being the pivotal year in the industry of Oman broadband. Firstly, we have demonstrated our ability matching our original business plan forecast. And for the first time, we became a net contributor to our shareholders. Secondly, we have managed to grow our business through these difficult times, supporting the introduction of a new mobile operator in Oman with the supply of infrastructure services in according with our government mandate. And third, Oman Broadband is becoming the backbone of the ICT strategy for the Oman ICT group to support the future growth on the emerging, on the deployment of the emerging technology in the Sultanate. I'm now looking forward to the next phase of our strategy, building on our strength and delivering the broadband infrastructure deeper into the country required for the development of our national business environment and with the welfare of our people and, and, and to continue working successfully with our partner AIB. With that, I would uh, end my um, uh, speech about Oman Broadband, closing with my thanks uh, to AIB uh, support in all our journey, being a very strong partner and a very successful, in, in our very successful journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Saeed, for the enlightening speech, walking us through the Oman Broadband journey and the creation of Oman ICT Group. I congratulate you on this very impressive achievement and your team's leadership. Now I would like to turn the attention to our panelists. First, I would like to invite Ms. Sarah R. Abdali, Head of Elite Customer Relations from Awasa, for a brief introduction and also tell us a little bit more about Awasa's working relationship with Oman Broadband. Sarah. Thank you, Gregory. Uh, Awasa is um, the Sultanate of Oman uh, first specialized uh, broadband internet uh, service uh, provider. And uh, we are the third fixed uh, telecom uh, with uh, class uh, one uh, license holders. Uh, we started the operation in to 2015, and commercially, we launched the company in 2016. Our purpose is to be the quickest, easiest way to connect everyone to whatever uh, he care about. We called ourselves the company of first, and this is reflected in the services that we provided, where we are the first company in Oman, which is 100% um, uh, fiber optic, and we are uh, the first also to launch uh, the speed of one gig for our consumers. And uh, the first also to be able to hit the 10 gig for our enterprise customer. We are also proud to say that we are the first uh, to uh, launch uh, or uh, to offer the online registration for our customer through uh, different channels like uh, our uh, website and uh, WhatsApp channels. Our partners, uh, Aman Broadband, uh, we are started at the same time almost. And uh, this came uh, following uh, or as per the guidelines uh, set of uh, Oman's uh, broadband uh, national strategy, where uh, Oman Broadband Company is responsible of uh, doing the infrastructure and building all the, the fiber and uh, ducting. And uh, we are, uh, on top of that, we are building our own uh, network by having our active uh, components uh, and uh, equipments. And Petir, the ecosystem of Oman's broadband market. Let me ask you the first question. From a user's perspective, what has been the biggest impact of Oman broadband has on Omani fiber broadband market? Okay, um, in short, uh, we can uh, say that um, uh, Amman Broadband Company, when they started it is, uh, their own investment in initial infrastructures, they laid the foundation for ISPs uh, to come into the market, which uh, promotes uh, competitions and ultimately uh, the benefit use uh, for the end users. 
And uh, as you know, and everyone know that uh, laying out or rolling out uh, a nationwide uh, fiber optic infrastructures uh, allowed uh, or uh, required an extensive uh, financial um, resources and efforts. Uh, by segregating uh, the infrastructures, uh, I mean, in, uh, segregating the, uh, what is the active and passive infrastructures, this would allow uh, definitely, um, uh, definitely will allow an extensive, uh, it will, sorry, this is, um, sorry. This will allow uh, more efficient use of resources. Uh, by passive uh, layers, we mean that uh, Oman broadband, uh, they will lay or um, they will go with the physical fiber and ducting and also associated equipment uh, for uh, the end user in the, I mean, uh, in the connected points. And uh, this will allow instead of every ISPs to come and uh, build uh, his own network, uh, sharing uh, Oman broadband uh, infrastructures uh, will give uh, more uh, or it will uh, make a lot of economic sense. This, uh, this approach will allow uh, then uh, every ISPs uh, to come into the market like ourselves. Uh, plus it will uh, also allow um, ISPs to be concentrated more into um, uh, launching or offering an innovative solution and services for the end users. And uh, to be honest, as um, a six years experience with Oman Broadband, uh, we seeing that um, Amount Broadband proved that they have an, uh, a reliable and um, uh, fast uh, network uh, over the regions. Thank you very much, Sarah. The, your explanation about enabling effect of the setup of Oman Broadband is extremely helpful. Um, if I may probe a little deeper, um, as Oman Broadband continue to grow its network, including adopting new technologies. Uh, how do you see the partnership with Oman Broadband look like going forward? Thank you. I think this is a very good question uh, where uh, we are doing a lot of things now in regard of this. Um, uh, we see our partnership with uh, Oman Broadband is continue to be strong. As uh, also OBC is uh, expanding into new areas we will evolve to a strategic partnership a long period of time, moving um, from contract SLA and uh, from contract and SLA uh, relationship. And uh, we are vision um, a joint uh, annual and quarterly review uh, with integrated system. So we can uh, serve the end users more efficiently and effectively. Uh, this will also mean that we will have um, a joint product development and carry on a joint uh, a feasibility study for diversity in technology and solution. And uh, one of the things that we are working now together is um, both teams are involving into um, looking into the fixed wireless solution for the uh, for the rural area. And uh, definitely this is, will be uh, beneficial for, uh, for the end users. In addition, we are also uh, doing the same for uh, business customer and our enterprises. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing these insights as an intermediary user between Oman Broadband, uh, the passive infrastructure provider and the end user of broadband services. Uh, now, let us turn to Silk Road Fund. Uh, they are one of the co-financiers of the Oman Broadband project. Ms. Grace Joe is the investment director who led the Silk Road Fund's original appraisal of this project. Uh, Grace. Would you like to give a brief introduction of the Silk Road Fund? Silk Road Fund is a medium to long-term development and investment fund established in December 2014 uh, with a total capital of 40 billion US dollar and 100 billion yuan. Uh, we follow a philosophy of openness, inclusiveness, and mutual benefits, and provides uh, equity and investment support for connectivity and economic cooperation. Uh, we care deeply of the triple bottom line of our investments and investees. Uh, all of our investment needs to be commercially viable on its own, and our investment return needs to match its overall risk profile. 
Um, besides this financial bottom line, our investment must have positive societal impact to the community of our investment destination and must be environmentally friendly. Uh, in addition to OBC, we have other existing investments in the GCC region. Uh, in the UAE alone, we have committed over 600 million yuan, uh, US dollar. Uh, we are the stakeholder of Dubai Hassan Power Plant, the Dubai Concentrated Solar Power Plant, and the Abu Dhabi Khalifa Terminal Phase 2. Uh, given the GCC region's economic vibrance and connectivity significance, Sucro Fund is keen at partnering up with financiers local and global for future investment opportunities in this region. Great. Great. Uh, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Oma Broadband uh, perhaps is one of the first debt investment made by the Silk Road Fund that is more known as an equity investor. My first question to Grace here is, uh, as a financial investor, uh, what were the main benefits of becoming a, uh, well, doing a project alongside AIB? Uh, it is indeed our first investment uh, and also our first investment in the ICT sector. Uh, so with this project, as we come in as a lender with AIB, we found a lot of common grounds between debt and equity provider when it comes to evaluating a deal. Um, with AIB leading this transaction, uh, it gives the comfort that the project will be prepared properly, achieving the highest international standards and practiced in line with our investment philosophy. Uh, AIB also brought in uh, valuable expertise to make the project more bankable. I know that when Oman's Ministry of Finance first approached you in 2017, OBC wanted a 15-year loan, uh, which is non recourse to the borrower. Uh, after AIB conducted commercial due diligence, you advised OBC to split this ambitious national coverage plan into two phases by geography and raise financing first for phase one only, which covers the more populous Muscat area. Uh, the loan term was also shortened to 10 years and structured as a corporate loan, but with certain project finance features. All of these tweaks reduced risks for the lenders while meeting the needs of OBC. So AIB managed to mobilize commercial investors into loan syndication without sovereign guarantee. AIB also helped OBC develop a holistic environment and so social policy and management plan, which, as I mentioned, was important in Sucro Fund's project. Uh, I think that is a testament to the demonstration effect of AIB provides necessary confidence to interested parties and helps crowding in broad source of financing. This is important for market development, and so far we are quite pleased with the progress of OBC. Great. Thank, thank you for the compliment. Likewise, you know, the inputs that Silk Road Fund provided together with the other uh, co finance here in multiple rounds of commercial discussion also give us new perspectives. And needless to say, uh, it was a great learning experience for all parties involved. Please allow me with a follow-on question. Thinking back, what were the keys in achieving a successful project if other uh, financial investors are involved? Uh, as a project manager at Silk Road Fund, uh, I believe key success factors for this project to achieve financial close are Number one, uh, good process management with timely sharing of key information with syndicate members like us. Uh, and secondly, spending the necessary time with the syndicate members to explain the nuances of the transaction, uh, which you, your team did a lot and helped us explain our investment to our investment committee. Uh, and finally, uh, building a good working relationship between you and us, and also ultimately OBC, the borrower. Um, having said that, achieving the financial close is only the beginning of a journey. The close working relationship and information sharing needs to continue with the respective loan monitoring group to allow swift decision making within the lender group to allow the sponsor to implement the project successfully. Uh, from the journey so far, we have learned a lot from AIB. 
Thank you, Grace, for the kind words uh, about this partnership uh, in a journey. Um, we value all the contribution from the co-financier and financial investor. Um, now we have a uh, Mr. Rohan um, Damjia, partner from Analysis Mason. Analysis Mason has advised AIB and it's a syndicate on Oman broadband project for two consecutive phases. As a lender's commercial advisor, um, can you share what are the determining factors for a successful due diligence process, Rohan? Okay, I think we probably have a, a little bit of a tech issue uh, with Rohan currently. Um, that shows technology enabled project uh, need to do more. Um, while we were uh, waiting for uh, Rohan, maybe I uh, pass a question uh, back to Saeed. Um, I thought, um, Oman Broadband is pursuing some new technology. Uh, I would like to, apart from 5G FWA, uh, is Oman Broadband looking at other technology such as the low orbit satellite, um, which various companies are uh, building? Yes, this is uh, yeah, this is a very good question, actually. Um, so we are um, looking at all the technologies to make an efficient uh, rollout for the broadband. I think all of these technologies are under our radar. Um, uh, it's just to um, cater for all the urban and suburban and rural areas of diversifies the technology where you will have to spread the broadband connectivity. And in this case, um, uh, thinking about a uh, low orbit satellite could be uh, used. However, that would be limited to uh, some uh, territories and areas where the fiber, the feasibility of the fiber or a fixed wireless access, which provide a better uh, economical and uh, technical uh, uh, outcome would be used. Other than uh, these areas, always uh, we would be to use the fiber optics first and maybe the fixed wireless as a second option. Thank you very much, Saeed, uh, for this uh, reflection on technology. Uh, I understand now Rohan is back, so I would uh, pass the uh, floor back to Rohan to share his thoughts about the uh, due diligence process. What uh, are the determining factors for a successful due diligence process for a uh, fiber product? Thank, Thank you so much, Gregory. Hopefully uh, everyone can hear me all right now and sincere apologies uh, for the brief tech issues. But Gregory, uh, you raise a very good question. Uh, now, uh, uh, based on an experience of close to about 90 odd diligences that one has done, uh, surprisingly and, and interestingly, I've seen that uh, the determining factors of a successful diligence have always been uh, more or less the same and, and uh, quite simple, yeah? Uh, if I had to spell out uh, the top three or four uh, factors that either drive a successful diligence or lack of, and then hence drive an unsuccessful diligence, uh, in order of priority, I would say one, uh, it's about asking the right questions. Yeah. So any due diligence mm -hmm. is uh, time bound and then asking the right questions, having the right hypotheses becomes quite important to drive a successful outcome out of the diligence process. The second then is uh, 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 aiming for the right level of detail. Now, uh, the right level of detail becomes quite important because uh, again, as a diligence is time bound, as, as an investment decision is time bound, we want to balance out between uh, boiling the ocean and trying to seek too much detail with a we seeking the right level of detail and enough detail and, and paying enough attention to detail on the right questions. So this kind of links back to my first determining factor. And, and then third of all, and very importantly, in fact, uh, more important than anything else, I, I would think sometimes, is, is the fact that the right level of rapport 
and, and a healthy rapport must exist between all stakeholders, between the dil diligence uh, uh, providers such as Analysis Mason, uh, between the financiers, uh, between the target company, and then all those folks uh, uh, who are part of the diligence uh, uh, process. Uh, because by the very nature of it, a due diligence is quite intrusive sometimes. And uh, uh, hence having that healthy rapport uh, can really smoothen uh, a, a lot of the rough edges. So I think asking the right questions, uh, the right level of detail and, and a healthy rapport between uh, various stakeholders would be my top three uh, determining factors for success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rohan. Um, I specifically like your comment about uh, asking too many details sometimes can be problematic. Um, now there's one more thing we haven't discussed so far, which is uh, COVID-19. Nobody foresaw uh, the world will be affected by that. Can you share your views on the challenges uh, in assessing a business like Oman Broadband during the COVID-19 era? Absolutely. So uh, uh, very interesting uh, question again, Gregory, and thank you for that. Uh, I, I think uh, there were, to begin with, there were clearly one or two uh, practical challenges related to COVID-19. Uh, one, of course, uh, being the challenge with uh, regards to physical site visits, uh, which at times can form an important, important for, uh, part of any due diligence. Uh, and, and the second then around the lack of physical meetings. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, uh, both of these challenges, uh, at least the second one and more so the second one, we were able to overcome uh, quite well. Uh, and, and what helped us overcome that was one uh, uh, technology. Uh, here we are uh, doing a virtual conference, uh, probably as well or, or uh, even better than a physical conference. Uh, and, and the second, of course, was uh, uh, the rapport across the stakeholders. With AIIB, the confidence, the uh, uh, optimal level of support that we got from them, the understanding that we got from all stakeholders, the understanding that we got from OBC and uh, 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 OBC as a stakeholder, uh, all of that really helped us as well. So I think technology, as well as uh, 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 the fantastic support from key stakeholders on both sides of the transaction, really helped us uh, help address those challenges. Thank you, Rohan. Very well said. Now I would turn back to Saeed as the captain of uh, Oman Broadband. Could you also share how COVID-19 has uh, impacted Oman Broadband? Um, I, I think uh, like uh, any other business, uh, COVID-19 have uh, impact, uh, in fact impacted the Oman Broadband and the ICT sector um, like the other sectors. Uh, and have uh, stated in her, the impacts the sector. Um, some sectors were impacted uh, badly by this. Um, on the ICT, we were impacted, uh, but there is, uh, as well on the other side, some positive uh, uh, outcome out of that. But anyway, the impact was was on Oman Broadband uh, noticed uh, very well, and uh, the, with the introduction of serve, a safe working practice, um, both in the office and in the field, uh, helped Oman Broadband to uh, roll out, uh, achieve uh, the, the rollout objectives and the connections targets. The main negative effects uh, were uh, in the fewer active fiber connection at home uh, and uh, business, uh, and there are uh, also delays in the project rollout because of the restriction of, uh, of the lockdowns on uh, different areas. All of this affected the revenue line, uh, but on the other side, uh, Oman Broadband has successfully managed their operation or OPEX um, uh, to compensate and uh, to, to overcome the challenges of the shortage in revenue. In fact, uh, Oman Broadband solution cost as well has been uh, coming down over the years because of the experience and the knowledge of the uh, technical uh, people. So uh, the, the experience in this field have helped them as well to reduce the cost of the implementation, uh, which, which helped uh, um, um, in reducing the overall cost and the uh, um, um, problem of the shortage in revenue and as well helped on the upcoming phase two uh, uh, financing grounds by having an optimized business plan as well. As a result, the impact of COVID-19 has become 
manageable um, based on uh, the uh, countermeasures which Oman Broadband have uh, taken uh, in place. Uh, also, would like to add that uh, we are also proud uh, of the new services uh, which was introduced yeah. by, uh, by Oman Broadband with our sister company, Space Communication Technology, uh, of offering uh, the basic end user connections through the satellite connections. And this was an initiative of Oman Broadband in, uh, uh, in coordination with the Telecom Regulatory Authority in Oman to uh, extend the reachability of the broadband connectivity through the satellite uh, to the uh, rural areas. So with that, actually, this was uh, one of the main benefits that technology or the Oman broadband have um, helped and support the technology to reach to, to even to the rural areas in order for them to be very well connected and keep the uh, momentum uh, as, um, uh, as usual in their normal lives, specifically on the education and health sector. Thank you very much, uh, Said. I think your uh, elaboration of how to manage to reduce the cost despite all the uh, challenge is extremely helpful. Um, now you've also heard the feedback from uh, other panelists. Uh, do you have any reflections to share with us as the CEO of the, the ICT group um, and also the acting CEO of uh, Oman Broadband? I guess you do have a, a bigger scheme on the back of your mind. Yeah, uh, I think I have to say that uh, everything I've heard uh, today has been very encouraging to us. It's very, uh, ultimately building infrastructure is to serve the end users. As such, end user satisfaction is the most important aspects in our uh, business or our targets. It's uh, uh, synonymous uh, with technology. As such, we are also evaluating the latest technology development like 5G fixed wireless, uh, fixed wireless access. Uh, all of these te new technologies are in our radar so that we want it always to um, be um, uh, up to the level of technology. Uh, so far, Amman Broadband has achieved a good urban coverage and, and the next phase of the development is to deploy the network to less density populated areas, and that's a challenge, which would benefit from the rural pop uh, uh, population. But in this ca case, we wanted to trade off between the traditional fiber and uh, we wanted to compare it with uh, 5G uh, fixed wireless access in order to deploy the right technology on the right place, which uh, uh, results in uh, the uh, best economical uh, outcome for us. Finally, we are very uh, grateful for AIB uh, to widen uh, Oman Broadband financing pool through the existing uh, transactions. In fact, we are working together with AIB again to evaluate the new financing of OBC, and this is something uh, we are proud of always, uh, and we are uh, very uh, thankful for AIB for having this always uh, partnership of the development of uh, the Oman uh, broadband infrastructure. As I said at the beginning, Oman broadband now, and specifically on phase two of the rollout, uh, is playing a crucial role in our strategy of the ICT in Oman, because uh, it is considered the backbone of the whole uh, uh, emerging technologies development and investments for the group itself. With that, uh, uh, again, I would uh, thank you, Gregor, uh, for your support and being um, um, a true partner uh, in this journey. Thank you, Said. Uh, it's our great pleasure to uh, help Oman Broadband. I also have to thank all my colleagues who work around the clock to make this uh, financing successful. Uh, in the next uh, um, 15 minutes, um, I will pick some uh, question from the audience uh, and um, uh, put it forward to the panel uh, before I invite our Director General to give the closing remark. Um, actually, a audience asked, um, this question is actually for Rohan. Um, they want to understand, based on what you have seen uh, in various broadband projects, uh, in a variety of uh, uh, countries, um, sometimes you represent equity, sometimes you represent debt, but they want you to give an independent view about what makes a successful broadband project, given there are so many uh, broadband projects uh, in the market. 
Absolutely. Thank you for that question, Gregory. Uh, uh, I, unlike the first of your uh, earlier two questions that I answered, I don't think there is a, 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 a set uh, three or four determinant factors in terms of what makes a successful broadband project. Of course, uh, depending on the market, depending on the market dynamics, uh, the determining factors of a successful broadband project uh, can be quite uh, different, especially from a financier's perspective, irrespective of uh, equity or debt. Uh, but, but I think uh, uh, there are a couple that uh, uh, always come up and, and that I have seen from my experience. Uh, one is a reasonable pace of rollout. Yeah. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, uh, rolling out fiber or rolling out broadband uh, at a pace which makes sense and, and at a pace which is uh, uh, promised uh, uh, to the investors at the beginning of uh, uh, the project. Uh, another uh, that uh, uh, another determining factor of a successful broadband project that I've seen is uh, that once the network is rolled out, uh, giving a good uh, uh, customer service to the end customers uh, across the customer life cycle. So I think it's it's these two uh, uh, factors that I have seen remain quite important uh, towards defining a successful broadband project. Thank you, Rohan. That's uh, um, that actually um, aligned very well with uh, what we observed as well. In, in fact, uh, one um, friend from the audience actually asked, uh, what feature of project finance are included in the corporate loan uh, structure of this project? What are the consideration when choosing such features? Um, I, I will try to uh, give some answer uh, from the financier side, and then I probably will uh, invite any panel uh, who feel they want to supplement. As Rohan said, uh, when we review the business case uh, brought by Saeed and his team, um, the value addition we brought is uh, um, we engage Analysis Mason and we actually acknowledge the very high upfront cost incurred by a startup company. So we advised uh, Oman Broadband to take a phased uh, road out. So it gave the company adequate time to grow the revenue. And also through the uh, roll out, um, more examination can be done to reduce the cost. So on balance, it benefits uh, the company. The project finance feature, I would say, Unlike a corporate finance, we, we did use a cash flow based analysis. So we um, did a financial model together with Oman Broadband, um, try to evaluate um, how much uh, cash flow it can generate, uh, and then tailor the debt. The challenge we found for a startup uh, corporate is usually banks would be very reluctant, commercial banks would be very reluctant to offer a long-term financing. But when the upfront cost is high, um, the long-term financing with a, uh, a long-term uh, asset like the fiber uh, is more appropriate. Uh, we're very pleased uh, with the help of all our syndication colleague. Uh, we managed to communicate very well with uh, uh, Indian Commercial Bank and Chinese Commercial Bank and a non-bank financial investor like Silk Road Fund. Uh, in the end, we uh, work out a 10-year corporate loan, uh, which is not uh, usually seen in the market uh, for this project. Um, I, I would uh, want to see if uh, Grace, our co-financier, want to add anything. Yes, I think indeed for a greenfield project like this and for a startup like OBC as the borrower, uh, the right projection of the future cash flow will be quite key. Uh, so in that aspect, I think Analysis Mason helped us a lot uh, to understand the um, ICT sector in Oman and the capability of OBC at delivering the fiber connection to the households there. Uh, and with these project finance features added in, such as the debt service uh, coverage ratio test, we're able to see what will be the cushion uh, provided to the lenders uh, when there are future 
uh, future uncertainties at uh, meeting the debt requirement and, and the payback uh, obligations. Uh, so I think these features and the indicators are uh, something that we are more comfortable with uh, and help us understand the overall risk profile of the project. Great. Thank you, uh, Grace. Um, since we still have a, a, about 10 minutes, so I would um, forward another question to uh, Sarah. You represent the user of Oman Broadband Service. Um, so what do, what do you see the different challenges in marketing fiber broadband service uh, to business and the residential users? Thank you. Um, to be honest, as um, a different in challenges between um, the end user as a consumer and business, um, uh, there is no much different, but maybe they have a common uh, challenge, which is uh, one of the things that we have to do, the coverage of the network, where we are still not reaching everywhere. But uh, with the continues, as uh, I mentioned uh, earlier, that uh, we continue to have an annual uh, review together uh, with our partner among broadband companies. And maybe Mr. Saeed uh, mentioned one of the project uh, is uh, the 5G wireless, uh, fixed uh, wireless solution. This might uh, be fulfilled and uh, we might reduce uh, the challenge of, of uh, not uh, having uh, the fiber everywhere. Uh, another uh, challenge that might be more into uh, the residential for the consumer is um, Oman market is um, a very uh, price sensitive. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, we found it uh, when it's come with the, with the selling point. Uh, but also this is something we uh, still keep uh, continue to review it from time to time by uh, having um, a review on uh, the cost models. And uh, we are trying from time to time also to offer something for the end user so we can attract them more into, into our, uh, let's say, into our services. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. This has been a great discussion on the AIB project. Now I would like to invite Ms. Supi Tarabani Song, Director General, Infrastructure Investment Operation for Region 2, to give the closing remark. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gregory. Um, I have been listening very um, interesting, with great interest on the, uh, from the keynote uh, uh, speaker, Engineer Said, and also our panel member. And I really feel that uh, I myself am very proud and I am sure that uh, those who are involved in this project should feel very proud of this project that uh, was selected as the infrastructure project showcase for to, uh, for for this year 2021 AIB annual meeting. As I mentioned in the opening remark uh, by Gregory, this project has achieved so many number of firsts uh, in AIB. It is the first uh, non self financing project that. Uh, AIB was the uh, leading uh, uh, arranger. Uh, it's the first indicate that, that AIB is indicated and mobilized commercial financier. It is the first also ICT project in, in uh, AIB portfolio. Uh, I think we have heard from many insightful remarks of the panelists today that this project clearly demonstrated how AIB uh, materialized its priorities in its project can benefit the clients, the user, the, the beneficiaries, the fellow, the sponsors. And uh, I think that is really, uh, 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 we, we are very proud of it because it is the first that we, uh, uh, apart from that uh, being many first, we know that this is uh, something that we can leave behind as uh, relevant and useful. We, I would like to mention something that actually CEO of Oman Broadband, uh, engineer Sayid mentioned, and I, it's, it's really hit hard my, my, my belief, and, if, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, everybody is that people 
talk, talk a lot about the pandemic, and I think uh, Greg asked that question also. The the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, how is affect? And I have to say that this kind of investment came at the at the right time when when uh, people have to rely a lot more on uh, uh, on ICT sector. You do the children do the online education. Uh, the patient have to have the telemedicine. Uh, you can't do all those. Uh, with a very well developed ICT sector. So I'm sure that when uh, Engineer Sayid talk about that, I can say that this is the way that uh, the new normal, we have to integrate a lot of digital. And we are proud that we can be uh, help with digital enable infrastructure. Uh, we this project also provide a connectivity and connectivity is not just the physical connectivity this is an information connectivity and the world these are we are we are the generation of digital generation so digital generation information connectivity this is we are right in the middle of that uh, we also we are proud of it as we are this project is a project that we the, uh, the good environment for private sector to come in and we are working also with the, uh, the, 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 the startup Oman Broadband and now we help Oman Broadband to grow. Uh, Oman Broadband was a pioneer entity in the new you know, digital uh, uh, investment and uh, it has very limited track record. AIB was really come in and were able to 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 look at it. We were able to uh, to help uh, making it a success story, and it's now expand into so many other things. We we have Vodafone uh, uh, newly enter into Omani broadband market, and I think that Engineer Sayid also talk about a new partner. Uh, this COVID-19 also with the space, uh, some kind of uh, uh, learning and all those. So um, we also, you know, go into other with uh, other participants, including Awasa. So I think we all here are quite proud to see that um, our bank and, and now, of course, is an annual meeting of AIB. We look into what we have done well, what we don't have, uh, what we need to improve. And I have said to say that this is one of the projects that we are proud. We think that we have done well. And uh, we are not only be able to find solution, we were able to look at the opportunity in the less obvious places to serve all of our member country regardless of their development uh, level, development stage. So, and again, we also throughout this discussion, you might have heard here and there, including from the CEO of Oman Broadband itself. And I have to say that, that, uh, that uh, we have followed on with the phase two of, uh, of the Oman Broadband project phase two. And tomorrow we are going to bring that phase two into discussion in our investment committee meeting. So as uh, uh, for any business, when your, when your client come back to you, when they face certain problem or when they want to expand and they come back to you, it is already a testimony of your success is a testimony that you you have done good that the, the that the client want to 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 continue the long term relationship with with the client is something we value and uh, so this project after tomorrow it, it can't go wrong it have to be successful so after we have a successful presentation and get approved by the investment uh, committee tomorrow uh, this project will be the one that will get approved by our president uh, uh, before the end of the year. So uh, I would like to use this opportunity to, to thank everyone to participate and listen in to our presentation on uh, uh, this Oman Broadband case. And I hope you enjoy this seminar and I hope that you are going to enjoy the rest of the event of AIB as well. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.